Guys, welcome back to the WebMonkey Show. It's Alex, and today's video I'm going to show you exactly how to manage multiple WordPress websites from a single location by making use of this tool here called uh, Manage WP. So this tool is going to be fantastic and very useful, especially if you're somebody who has multiple WordPress websites. Uh, maybe you're a WordPress manager and you manage WordPress websites for different types of clients. Rather than you having to log into each individual website and check for updates and run security checks, things like that, you can just add all those websites to your account in here and you can manage everything from a single dashboard. So this is great for our work efficiency. So all you need to do basically, it's actually free by the way, all you need to do is to go to managewp.com. You'll see the box in here asking you to provide your email, provide your email, enter the capture code, Click the box that says uh, you've agreed to the terms of uh, service and privacy policy, even though you don't even know <laughs> what that policy is. Just check the box and then uh, hit sign up. The registration process is very, very straightforward. They'll ask you for your first name, last name, and then they'll ask you ask you to add your first website. You can just click on the skip to dashboard uh, link. Now, when you do that, this will bring you straight to your dashboard. By the way, you'll get the email from them saying, you know, thanks for signing up, please confirm your account. So you get an email like this, make sure you confirm uh, the sign up. So what I'm gonna do for demonstra demonstrative purposes is I'm gonna add two websites. I have one in here, a WooCommerce store, which by the way, I showed, I made a full tutorial on how to build this particular store a couple of weeks ago. If you're interested, I'll have the link in the box below or there will be like a timestamp or like a, a card. You can check it out. And then I also have the blog in here, a travel blog. So I'm gonna add these two websites to my dashboard. So this is my dashboard in here I have logged in. First thing, of course, is to add websites. I'm gonna click on add website, and I'm gonna go ahead now and grab the first URL. Okay, come in here, and I'm going to paste, and I'm going to now add the website. And of course, I'll have to add my uh, username and the password as well. So let me go ahead and add that one real quick add the password let me grab the username all right i'm going to go ahead now and add the website so basically the plugin has to confirm that i am indeed the owner of the site or I do, that i do have uh, administrative access to the site so right now it's establishing the connection using my username and my password it doesn't take that long about maybe like 10 15 seconds so let's just wait for this to uh, to add still waiting <laughs> okay so now you can see it says I've successfully added my website so I'm gonna go ahead now and add the author website in here okay so let me just grab the URL paste the link add the website and then again I'm gonna go ahead now and log in one more time and there it is so you can see right now I've added the second website as well so all I need to do right now is I can just go right here to overview and this will give me an overview of all the sites I've added to my account, the number of plugins that need to be updated. You can see all the plugins in here, a number of themes that need to be updated and a few other uh, information. So if I was to pick each website individually, I'll go right here to find a website. Let's take a look at the Passport Travel site first of all. So I've clicked in there. So we're now accessing the dashboard of my travel blog website. So you can see right here, it says there are six plugins that require an update, Elementor, Elementor Pro, essential add-ons for Elementor, I believe, uh, paid memberships plus add-ons and so on. So I could choose to now update these plugins if I wanted to. I'll check the box in here, come in down here and update that particular plugin. Now, you would also notice that we do have some other features in here like the uptime monitor. This is a paid feature that will let you know uh, whenever your website is down. The truth of the matter, though, is that if you have a very reputable, reliable web host, you're not going to need this service. Uh, for optimization, you might see something like, oh, we need to optimize our post comments, things like that. In fact, let me switch the website in here. Okay, let me go to Cool Store and see if we can do that. Okay, it looks like all my sites are actually fully optimized, but in any case, you will see something like a message in here saying that, hey, you can optimize your site. Uh, click here to run the optimization process. Just simply click on the button and you will get that. You also have the SEO feature, which is also a paid feature. But again, if you have a very good plugin, like, like let's say Rank Math, running on your sites, you're not going to need this particular service. However, if you don't, 
I would recommend that you go for it because it's only a dollar a month. That's basically $12 for the whole year and you monitor your website ranking. So keep that in mind. Okay, you also have backups down in here, which allows you to run on-demand backups. But again, if you have a reputable web host, they should be providing you with free daily backups. So you don't need this particular service. All right, I'm going to go back in here, take a look at plugins. So right now you can see all the plugins I have installed on my cool store website. You can see I have 21 active plugins, one inactive plugin, and 11 of these plugins require updates. So again, I can come in here, run the updates. Same goes with the themes as well. I have access to the users on my site. I can choose to add a new user or modify existing users. Now you have the link monitor, which is also a paid service. It will monitor our broken links on your site. But again, if you have a good performance plugin on your site, you may not need this particular service. Uh, security. Again, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but the truth is if you have a good security plugin on your site, you may not need this feature. However, the interesting thing here is that they do have the free version and the, then the paid version. So since there's a free version, let's check it out. I'm going to go ahead and click on activate security check. And you can see we have the free version in here. I'll click on activate. Let's close. Now I have the option to run a security check. So it's going to check if there's any sort of malware uh, running on my site. This might take up to a minute. So while we're waiting for this service to finish or this check to finish, let's come down in here to performance. And just like with the security check, we do have both the free version and the paid version. I'm going to go ahead now and activate the free version. So what this will do is, is that it will test to see how quickly my website can load from different types of locations. Before we run this check, let's go back to security. And there you go. You can see right now it says my site is clean. That would have been very embarrassing if this if this uh, <laughs> showed up with some malware. That would have been very embarrassing for me since I'm recording this live. But anyway, it's clean, so no issues. Let's go back to performance. So let's try to run the test from, let's say, Mumbai, Mumbai, India. So let's check to see uh, how quickly my site loads for somebody who lives in Mumbai, in India. I don't expect this to be fast, so just keep that in mind. All right. Uptime Monitor, SEO Ranking, we've talked about those. Now, you do have the Client Report. This is particularly useful if you're managing websites for different types of clients. So, right in here, you have the Activate Client Reports, free version, paid version. Let's go to free version, Activate. So, this would allow us to create like reports of the site health for our clients. So, we can run different kinds of checks on the sites. And once we finish, we can then generate a report and send it to the client, let them know, hey, this is the work that we've done. Before we do this report, let's go back to performance. Okay, so it's still taking a while. Okay, let's go back to client report. So let's generate a new report, but I'm going to click on new report. So in here, you have different kinds of customization options like the language, date format, date range, and so on. You can choose what sections you'd like to include in the report. I'm just going to go ahead and skip all of this. Let's customize. And then in here, again, you can add your introductory message, add a logo for that particular company or the person you're running the site for. And then you have like your front page template, the color, things like that. These are all self-explanatory. I'm just going to come in, in here, preview and download. So it's going to take a while for the report to generate. Actually, it's not going to take a while. Okay, so the report is done. So now I can download as a PDF or I can send to a client. So this is the report right there. Nothing that much to see. But let's go back to performance real quick. And actually, that's not quite bad considering that my site is just a test site. So page speed is a C and the Y slow grade is a B. So not too bad. Obviously, things can be improved, but that's basically the performance check when it was ran from uh, Mumbai, India. Okay, enough about that. Let me show you how you can add clients uh, to your account. So right in here underneath the website, you have clients. So I'm going to click in there. Let's add our first client. So I'll call this guy uh, John uh, James or John Jameson. Okay, I'm just going to add my own Gmail. Now I can assign the uh, cool store website to him. So let's assume that James owns the cool stuff website and managing it for him. So I've signed that. I can I can add image image URL for James and then I can add the company name and then the phone number. So let me just change the company. Oh, sorry about that. 
okay, you do have to be very, very careful whenever you add in the clans, right? It's very, very sensitive. If you click outside, everything closes, so it's kind of annoying. So let me just quickly do this one more time. Uh, John Jameson, email, assign the cool store. Okay, company name, we're going to call this one the cool store. Okay, and then uh, note uh, a good client who likes backups and security, you know, just something fancy. Click on create, and that's it. So John Jemison is our first client. So of course, in here, we can now check the websites that we've linked to him. We have settings for him where we can configure phone number, name, emails, things like that, should in case uh, things change. And that's pretty much it. So for, uh, for John Jemison, in here, we also have access to the report history. So if, if we've ever sent any reports to James, we'll be able to access the reports in here. You can also schedule reports, but unfortunately that's gonna be uh, a paid version for this particular uh, feature. And that's pretty much it. So under add-ons again, we've talked about them, the SEO add-on, the security add-on, performance add-on, backups add-on, and so on. If you choose to add them, you will have access to them in here and you can see all the sites and you can also see the actual services that have been enabled in each one of these sites. And that's it. Okay, just a few more things to mention before I round up. For each particular uh, website, right in here, for example, for Passport Travel, I can access the WP uh, Admin. This will take me straight to the back end if I wanted to. And you can see I've gotten access to the dashboard real quick. Or I can go over here to Settings. And I could choose to reconnect the site, refresh the thumbnail, pause the site, or I could even remove the site. Uh, you have tags and clients. You can add tags to this particular site. You have advanced options like, hey, you know, I'm using HTTP authentication. You could also choose to prevent updates, discourage search, search engines from indexing the site, and so on. All right, that's pretty much it for the manage uh, WP service. One last thing real quick uh, in here, of course, is your account. You can check out your settings, your billing. You have access to more tools, and of course, they support uh, documentation in there as well. So that's pretty much how to use the Orion Manage WP uh, service for WordPress users. Of course, if you have any questions or comments, put them down in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer as many of them as I can. If you enjoyed today's video, please do hit the thumbs up button. Tell the world that you like this video and if this is the first time you're coming into the channel, my name is Alex, I make tutorials on WordPress. So I hope you enjoyed the video, hit the bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new video and of course do subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Okay, it's been a pleasure, stay safe out there and I'll talk to you next time. Cheers.